classic risk factors that we're all well familiar with is preceding blood transfusions before 1990 when the hepatitis C virus was identified and it started to become effectively screened out of the blood supply. Uh, intravenous drug use, illicit drug use, uh, cocaine use is, is well reported as uh, a risk factor for hepatitis C. But despite those two risk factors as being noted to be the predominant risk factors for acquisition, there are about one-third of individuals that present to their physician and found to have hepatitis C that are questioning have no apparent risk factors for how they perceive the virus. Um, there have been several case uh, control reports and various single center reports of sporadic hepatitis C virus exposure uh, following uh, pedicure, manicure, barbershop, uh, and, uh, and other uh, types of uh, potential uh, sources of contamination through reutilized instru instruments. This particular re uh, report, uh, an abstract uh, written by uh, David Johnson from uh, Norfolk, Virginia, uh, reflects a case that he saw of an individual that got acute enteric hepatitis two weeks after a uh, manicure pedicure. pedicure. Um, the, uh, and that was reported to the Virginia State Department of Health. They conducted an investigation, and the abstract basically summarizes the result of that investigation, the practices for uh, disinfection of, uh, of uh, those types of utensils utilized in barbershops and nail salons, and the uh, practices and requirements in, in many other states, as well as other uh, reports that have been uh, in, in the literature. Uh, I can tell you one of my own experiences, one of my own patients actually came to me with acute enteric hepatitis C after she had received a, a treatment uh, in a health spa uh, where they uh, inject, it's, it's kind of like a chemical lithotrip, uh, chemical uh, liposuction type therapy uh, where they inject a, a fat solvent under the skin. It dissolves fat. And, uh, and she developed acute enteric hepatitis C about two weeks uh, after that uh, treatment that she received. So there's no doubt that these types of things occur. The question is, uh, are the recommended practices uh, well adhered to at all of these uh, hair salons, barbershops, uh, nail uh, uh, centers, and um, uh, and are the practices that are recommended by the state sufficient? In this particular report, the Virginia Department of Health went into the, uh, the particular salon and they reviewed their practices, they reviewed the disinfectants utilized to sterilize the equipment, and they concluded that the disinfectant procedures are appropriate, they're adequate, but they need to be adhered. But th that's the whole key, and that's the key to many things, that's the key to universal precautions as well. They're very effective if they're adhered to. And we know we have breaks in universal precautions periodically throughout medicine that will lead to outbreaks of, uh, of um, infectious diseases. Any updates on the endoscopy center epidemics for outdoor exposure? The most, uh, there have been, been many endoscopy center epidemics actually uh, published. There's, uh, uh, v there are several actually VA uh, endoscopy uh, center contaminations, and but the most widely reported one uh, was the uh, Dosky Center in Las Vegas. Uh, I don't know uh, what is uh, the outcome, uh, outcome of that, but I know I've had the opportunity to review uh, may, uh, several case records um, in endoscopy uh, outbreaks. Um, and uh, in some cases, it's clear that uh, the patient must have been exposed to their hepatitis C before their, uh, before their procedure. In other cases, it's far less clear because patients had risk factors and we didn't know. But uh, I remember one or two patients in particular when I reviewed some of these, uh, where the patient had serendipitously, two patients had serendipitously been tested for hepatitis C within a year of their colonoscopy. And then in their screening, once the break was identified and they received their letter and they came in for screening, they were positive. <coughs>
So it, there's no doubt that it happens. I think iatrogenic exposure for hepatitis C is much, much more common than we realize. And, uh, but I think it's all related to breaks in technique, breaks in universal uh, precautions, and uh, inappropriate sterilization of equipment. So what um, kind of message should uh, doctors give patients? I mean, it, it sounds like this works if it's used correctly, so people don't need to worry about like bringing their own instruments into these places. No, I think I. I mean, I don't think we should alert the public that they should only get their hair cut at home. Right. Uh, my wife actually does a do good job cutting hair, but there are many wives that probably don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Um, I, I think the message is to all of these facilities that they need to use the equipment correctly. Mm -hmm. They need to disinfect correctly. They need to uh, have, you know, rotate, you know, their shears or their, their equipment so that it sits in the disinfectant the appropriate period of time.